Hi guys, welcome back to Adekunle Stock Line. Uh, and on today's episode, uh, we'll be having a, revert, a very senior reverting advocate of Nigeria, Chief uh, Ni Akintola, SAN. It's going to be a wonderful session, trust me. Uh, you don't want to miss this. All right, let's go. Good afternoon, Lenesik. Once again, my name is Adekunle Olani the team lead of this initiative. Uh, so, sir, can we meet you? Well, my name is Adeni Akintola. My my name is Michael. You know the photo that's Adeni Michael Akitola. That's what is on the road. So uh when did when were you called to the Nigerian ambassador? I was called to the Nigerian ambassador in nineteen eighty six. The famous millennium set. <laughs> we were called to the bar when Nigeria provision became exactly one hundred years in Nigeria. Wow. Wow. And that's why <laughs> we, I mean we pride ourselves as the most blessed of the set that I have ever graduated from the Nigerian Law School. Wow. We have the largest concentration of judges in the country today. Wow. We have the largest concentration of senior advocates of Nigeria in the country today. Wow. We have the largest concentration of political office holders since 1999 to date. Wow. There has been no president that came on board without a class 86 person <laughs> on board as either as minister or special advisor wow. but in fact at this stage we had four of our sets wow. in the same regime as ministers and we've been the only set that has produced two attorney general attorney general minister of justice since 1999 wow. our wow. set i belong to that special <laughs> class Good to know, good to know, Lenesik. Uh, so, sir, when were you uh, converted with the uh, prestigious rank of the senior advocate? Uh, 2001. 2001. Wow. I've come a long way, 2001. <laughs> so, can you please share with us how the journey has been? Well, uh, before then or since then. Okay, we would like to know uh, actually uh, what motivated you into studying? Uh, well, at that time, we learned a lot from our seniors. And uh, we keep to the rules. You see, respect for the senior was the utmost weapon at our disposal. Then I remember, even when we became qualified to apply, we were waiting for our seniors. You are this man, even within, not even within the same chambers, within the same environment. I remember. Chief uh, Akiluji, may God bless him, one of our seniors in town. In 1996, he missed it, he applied, I mean, that was the year, Fagbe Mian and others were conferred with uh, the rank of, prestigious rank of Senior Advocate of Nigeria. And we were discussing. And he asked me, and I said, oh God, we are waiting for you, sir, that by the time you cross, to we we'll start making our applications, and as much well, as I did, I started applying in 1998. After all those I consider to be my seniors, I've crossed the the bridge, so to say. I remember in 1997 when Chief Akuli Jimmy was confirmed with the prestigious uh, rank, and we had a party for him in the bedroom. And many of us now thought. The coast was clear. And uh, it was Justice Igu, God bless him, of the Supreme Court, who, saw, who first of all made that remark about me. So, when are you applying? I came to do this case known as uh, uh, Yaya Digu, number two, against the Attorney General of uh, the then or your old lawyer state. I should say that not been created. And I was before them, and uh, on that panel was Justice Beguri. On the, on the panel were people like Justice Beguri, Ogundari, Igu himself, and it was a very tough appeal. I actually wanted to remove the then incumbent Olu of Iwo. <laughs> and I came, that was the first day I came across what is called policy judgment. Hmm. You see, the Supreme Court is not just a court of law. It's also a court of policy. It's a court, it is a peace court that regulates the society, that aids peace, that ensures peace, orderliness, and prosperity of the country. I had 
all the facts in my favor by the briefs of argument, both from we as appellants and from, and from the respondents. I was quite, quite, quite sure that with what was before the Supreme Court, I was going to have my way. And the first question came from Justice Sigu that day. Mr. Kitola, how many policemen have you in your chambers? And of course, I was at sea. What has policemen got to do there <laughs> with the case? Because the fact of the case was that there was an incumbent to Lou, and as at the time it was installed, there was no declaration, declaration. And before there could be a valid, before a valid uh, Lou will be installed, there must have been a valid chieftaincy declaration. The death uh, chief declaration had been set aside, and that was standard which was challenged under Chibola like, when he was governor of, uh, of the mm -hmm. state in 1979. And the then the Lugu, was not installed in line with the chief declaration. But there was no in existence. And I was banking on that. And just just as uh, Igu asked me, Mr. Akitola, I was not yet a chief. How many policemen have you in your chambers? And of course, I was taking that back. I said, my Lord, I'm a C. I don't understand. And just, well, I said, you will not understand. We are saying, how many policemen can you supply in case there is riot in the room? <laughs> then quickly, Justice Begori chipped you. What? Of all the justices I mentioned, only one of them is lit. Oh. The others are alive. By the grace of God, Josigu is there. My father, I love him so much because he was actually the person, the one who asked me when I was going to put in my application. Oh. At that time, you are you are invited to come to the bench. You are invited to apply for this prestigious rank. This was not a chief tasty type too. As it is today. What is the situation title? You must have been seen to be well qualified for that. Then we had categories A, B, C. Wow. Then I came in category A. Wow. Only two of us. But then why? The records are there. And at that time, uh, it was like jump, <laughs> uh, jump result, jump, jump result, because they would paste it on the notice board. At the Supreme Court, they will paste it there. Those who are not qualified will, be, will put NQ in front of their names. Mm. And those who are qualified they will be by categories, they put category A, category B, category C. And I remember Ogao CJ Okocha, one of our first seniors, in 2001 when I got the sick. We had, in Naples, we had a neck meeting of the NBA. In Saria. Saria. As soon as I came into the uh, I mean, I met him at the corridor and he said, ah, nee, and he see good high, good law for your high so. Because and I was what, what was the good law? He said they have seen my name on the notice board. Wow. <laughs> I just look at it day before. He was the one that first drew my attention, said, I did see I did see good good law for your high so <laughs> you belong you and why we were in category A. But you paste it there. Wow. So back to the issue of uh, Yolu. Yeah, then after the interrogation by Justices uh, Igu and Begori, I mean Ogudari, Begori chipping, just Begori chipping, I said, look, that man said the man you want to remove. If they have not even looked, we've not even started. They are just looking at, they've read the briefs. I said, the man has been on the throne for how many years? I said, my lord, he's been on the throne for 27 years. Wow. I said, I want him removed. I said, yes, my lord, because the, the law says so. That there should be a valid declaration before it could be installed. And Justice <laughs> Ogudari said, and you will now run back to him, but if the anxiety in you. <laughs> Even before adopting my brief, I knew we had lost the case. But that was a policy judgment. It was, and you, you, you commend their wisdom. These are old men who have seen it all. They knew the implications. That if they follow the law strictly, they like 
the likely consequence. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nancy. You see, but many young, younger ones of the, today, they don't understand the difference between policy judgment and judgment according to them. When you see them criticizing judgment. some judgment of the Supreme Court, you cannot but be laughing at their ignorance. Supreme Court is not just a court of law. It's also a court of policy. Yes. Thank you so much, Nancy. I must confess, I'm also just you know, hearing that word. Yeah, it is, <laughs> it is not. If they follow civil the law, they will be, be anarchy in the society. So that is what the Supreme Court is there for. To regulate, to ensure that there is peace, there is tranquility. That was why one of them formulated the principle of doctrine of necessity. Sure. Laws are made for men. Sure. And not that, that men are not made for. <laughs> sure, See? Sure. But at the lower level, the High Court and Court of Appeal, our judicial system is acquisitorial in nature. It's justice according to the law, not just according to how you feel, not just, just according to your emotion. We were taught all this early enough to appreciate it. Because we stayed so long in chambers with our seniors. And at that time, if you whatever whatever duration you are. All the seniors in that region are your seniors, not necessarily your principal. Many people will never knew that Chief Ayala, who gave me much of my training, was not actually my. It was just Arasi. Arasi was my principal. But in the Badon, every senior there was for a senior. All the seniors. Well, the moment you come into town, your principal will say your name to the bar station. The person on the board, all the seniors in town will know that you are around. And each, each and every one of them will be free to send for you. The training was joint. Mm -hmm. More like a community training. It was a kind of community training. Many of us were trained by Afe Baola, we never actually came from his chamber, from his table. Many of us, self many of us, the, the, the governor. Many like that. Just I realized there was not one of us that really passed through that period. even though it was not our principal. main principal. But, but he was so busy. Well, the chamber was very busy. He left house every day. He said, for instance, he was fond, very fond of me. You call my guard, said that's your <laughs> short boy. <laughs> well, he will give order to my own principal. Or as he said, that's your short boy to me. Thank you so much. Nelson. And I was practically in his office, in and out. Thank you so much, Nelson. See, there is this uh, particular aspect that I want you to actually comment on. Uh, I read about you, and you know, so many people do not know this story. And I know there are some law students that are actually, you know, on the channel, so watching you right now. So, uh, growing up, can you please tell us, growing up, at what point, at what age did you decide to you know, become a lawyer? And what are the qualities you saw in yourself at that early stage that motivated you to study law? Well, my, I must uh, give all the glory, honor, and adoration to God my, Almighty. Uh, my primary school was done in the village. I'm a butch boy. <laughs> I'm still a butch boy. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, where I was born, it was a place that was far from civilization. It was a place where we only see vehicle moving until the market days. And I'm not saying that was the truth. Uh, we had to walk for 15, 20 kilometers every morning to get to the market, every five, five days. In fact, we struggle to be among those who go to the market. It's very easy some weekends after school. And uh, I was born in a place called Omiya, uh, Ogusami village, very near Omiadio, about 15, 20 kilometers away from Omiadio. I remember some five years ago, I took some journalists, including Charlie Television, they followed me, and they were wondering where I was actually born. I said, Yes. If I got to this place where a vehicle could no longer pass, we had to go through, you know, those vehicles that lift timbers. <laughs> yes, sir. We had to carry, uh, climb those lorries that took us across some streams, some rough roads. We had to abandon our porch cars. And the journalists actually followed me to see. And the, the only means of the civilization they saw there was the primary school. Wow. And uh, that was the place we had to, we had to go 
to the brook to, to the brook in the morning to fetch water to bath and you cut a branch of a tree to brush your teeth because it, your teeth will be checked by the teachers in primary school. I will I will have hugged in the morning. I will have hugged again around the neighboring villages before going to the brook to have a pit, then come back to our village, dress up for school and of course the uniform there was khaki. <laughs> so they call it pharaohs. That was the setting to which I was born. And uh, I, finished, I had no opportunity of going to any secondary school. I never saw the fall of any secondary school. Uh, when I finished, I was actually an apprentice mechanic. I was brought to the town from the village to start learning mechanic at Inoli Indi. Of course, I wanted to go to school. I saw boys and girls, my compa family, going to secondary school. We envy them because they go and come back. Don't forget that I was from the village. When you come from the village, at every festival, whether Christmas or Igugu festival, but my because my grandfather was a rich man by the local standard of our village of that environment, and uh, had the best of. What we call, we call the best of our school education then. And I wanted to go to school. So I ran away from the mechanic workshop where I was placed. And of course, my grandfather had died then. My relation would not have yeah, that. It's either I stayed in that garage or I do, I leave home. So I left home. So I became a vagabond. I left and I, I joined. A uh, transport, uh, a transporter called Ali Jolo. Mm -hmm. That money is a stranger. Mm -hmm. Literally, many money is a stranger. That was what was written on the body of that vehicle that carried planks. So I was invited. I was practically sleeping in the garages, sleeping with him, living with him, and along the way, there was divine intervention in my life. An unknown person came, one year by man from Gumacho, came from Kaduna to buy planks at Ugumpa. Then the plank market was at Ugumpa, Kibola, not Bodija where it is today in Nevada. So he came to buy planks. After loading the planks, he was asking whether some of the boys will accompany him to Kaduna with the vehicle. For since nobody was actually thinking of me, I followed him to. To, to follow the vehicle. So we got to Kaduna and to don't wonder. We were following the, the planks and of course I absconded <laughs> there. So absconding is, absconding is not something that started today. <laughs> when you hear a story away, who absconding? Some of us have done that before. <laughs> I did it in Kaduna. So I absconded from my yoga. Unfortunately, that my yoga just died last year. Wow. After returning from Mecca, where I we sponsored him to go wow. for the second time, you know. Wow. That was my master. So, it was from there, after I was absconding. So, I became a vagabond in Cardinal. They were to look for me. I was hacking and living within the garage. Whichever lorries and uh, people, whichever people came around to buy goods, we helped them lift it. We were called Alaru, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. In Yoruba. Yes, so, so, what I was doing. But one day, I saw a photographer shop by the side of Amdala Chemist. A long amount of way in Kaduna. And of course, there is a Baptist. I'm a Baptist. I come from a Baptist family. So, I saw that photographer workshop. I did photos. I went there and I met the man. I, I said I wanted to learn photography. Said, where, are you, where are you coming from? I told him I had no parents. <laughs> so, he was curious. He couldn't take on a boy of that. So he went and consulted Reverend Akimbala, who was the pastor in charge of First Baptist Church, Kaduna. At it's also along that about the way. 
I don't know what transfer between them, so he decided to take me on. So I became his apprentice uh, as well as a houseboy. Mm -hmm. He was living in a room and parlor apartment. So I was with him. I was learning the trade. The very on the very 13th day, 13th day that I got to him, something miraculous happened. He went out for choir because he was the choir master. I think I sang choir master also. Okay. He went there. And before he came, somebody came. He wanted to do, to take photograph, uh, a passport photograph. Then it was all black and white. There was nothing like color. The only color photograph we had then was, uh, when you call it Polaroid, Polaroid, you have to be shaking it like this. For the way after taking it, you shake it. After some minutes, it will show the color. Of course, it will get, get faded later. That was what was obtainable then. So the fellow who came for his photograph needed it urgently. And our master was not around. And I met two other seniors in the shop. So I undertook to take the photograph, took the risk. And he was shouting, Mike, Mike, what is So that was my common name. People called Mike, Mike. So I took the photograph, caught the film, because a large film, about 30 pieces or so. We had to do so in the dark room. So I went to the dark room again, developed the film, came out printed the, the photograph and was drying it. It was on the dryer when the guy, when the guy they came in. What, what's happening here? And everybody, the other two said, Mike, you knew. <laughs> Me, it is Mike. He was curious. What? He rushed quickly to the dryer, lifted it up, look at the photograph, very bright. Yeah. He placed it back. He waited until the photograph got dried. He caught the passport, gave it to the and ran without speaking to me. I never knew he was running to the church. He ran straight to Reverend Akimbal of Bele Memory and told him his experience. Then he came back and looked at me and scolded me. That I shouldn't do that again. But he was curious, what type of man it is. And no remember nobody knew where I came from. Nobody after that seen my, my parents. No father, no mother. Because by the way, I grew up with my grandfather and the foster mother. I never got to know my real father until I had finished primary school. Or my grandfather died. I never knew, got to know my real father. I never got to know my siblings. In fact, my siblings were not known to me until I graduated from the University of Ibadan. So that was, it was the trajectory of my life is such that uh, it's a long story. So, I was for Gade, learning the trade, but I had an advantage. He had two of his younger brothers living with him. They were in secondary school in Kakuri. Those who know Kakuri know, know a place called Kakuri. It's an outskirt of Kaduna, after the bridge, after Kaduna River. I don't forget, we were living, uh, what do I call it now? I just mentioned the name of our area now. Um, I don't mention the name of our, of our area now, not, not Kakuri, not uh, Kau either. Uh, I remember, I just mentioned the name now. So, the Longira Road. Longira Road, where we are living, Longira Road. Where there was one chief, Uyeliki, uh, was a bread maker. He was making bread. But there was a popular bread, they called Uyeliki bread in uh, Kaduna. That was where. The area where my guy was living, where I was living with Gadi. So when those boys, the two boys, Trinji and Tunde, sometimes they come back from school, they were playing ball, and I would be reading their books. So I took advantage of my being fortunate to be living with those two, two guys. guys. And I was reading their books. I will never forget their yeah. impact in my life and the impact of Gadi in my life. They all ate from Obumasha. That was the, tra the tra trajectory of my life. Uh, I was fortunate to have Tunji and Tunde, mm -hmm. who were both students in the secondary school in Kakuri. By the way, Kakuri was made up of industrial part of Kaduna there. All the textiles means we are in Kakuri. In fact, it was the hub of textiles industry in Nigeria. So, 
I grew up and uh, the Okwadi bought GC form for Tunji and Tunji, and I pleaded with him to buy one for me. And I wrote it. My GC papers. Lo and behold, the stuff came out. I passed the two of them failed. I even passed mathematics. Before then, I was one, I used to coach them. I was doing the English language, economy, I used to teach them. Because when they close at the shop by 6 p.m., we'll have closed. So everybody will have been reading. I do the household course, you no, know, clean the house, clean it. And they will busy playing football, doing some other things. That is how I started my academic journey. So, of course, I became a trained photographer and I had in my pocket six papers, it's including English language and mathematics. They will now move to Joss from there. I still follow my guide to Joss. There I became a local teacher, teaching, coaching the students in the church, the children of the elites in the church, like the king Okini. You know, this Sunday, Dari, the father was a deacon in our church. He's my younger brother, you know, to us. I was very close to that family. Uh, his senior, most senior brother, Larry Dari, was actually my contemporary at the University of Ibadan. We were living together. So I became, uh, including the, pre, the uh, DPP of your state, was one of the the boys I was coaching. Some of them have now become judges and you know. We got to know each other from yeah. So it was from there I now did my GC advanced level. And I had the best result in the entire Benue Plate State. As an external candidate. Professor Elami, whose son is now the head of chambers in Abuja here, in this my chambers, was one of those people who used to go and read together at Rukuba Barracks. Uh, Professor Elami, of the Faculty of Law. In fact, of just was also an external candidate. Was my leading partner in just. He was older than us. Was a messenger at the University of Ibadan, just campus. Then there was no University of just then. So we used to read together, and uh, of course, I passed before all of them and. I had BD, which was very rare. And uh, the one, Dicky Okini, in my church, called me one day and advised me to go to the, to the university. So, what I used to go to the university. My amb ambition then was to become an NC teacher. <laughs> because before he advised me, I'd apply to Federal College of uh, uh, um, this Akwanga, College of Econ Akwanga. Akwanga here, yeah, now in Nazareth State. I wanted to, because it was then O Plato State. Benue Plateau State, used to be Benue Plateau State. So, but when uh, Riko Gini advised me to try my hands, I did. I wanted to go to Bahiri University. Myself and uh, Mrs. Uh, Unigbidi, the wife of, former speaker of, uh, the wife of Dr. Akunigbidi, SCN, who all grew up together in the same church. All of us there. The likes of uh, Rucha Chukurucha. Uh, all boys in Jaws, we used to hug and play together at uh, Refit, at uh, Pulu Grand, and uh, Jampano. We used to do so many things together then. So I grew up in Jaws, the likes of uh, Governor, um, the former Governor of uh, Bauchi State, Ahmed Mwazu. We are all just boys. That's what, when just was just. When just was a mini Nigeria. And I can tell you for free that as at the time I entered the university, I knew no other place. I knew just like I knew the back of my hands. Just was home to everybody. We, we go out there, to, down to Bukuru, to uh, Bokos, to go and do what we call Sword drill for my church. That's competition in the Bible. We, do, we are doing sword drills. Uh -huh. 
So, that was it. And by the time I now applied to go to the university, I actually applied to read sociology. That was what I was admitted to read at the University of Ife. Because I had nobody to guide me. As I was filling the, job, the form, I was just pulling first choice, sociology, second choice, sociology. So I came all the way from Joss to the University of Ife to register. I actually matriculated at the University of Ife. But it was during the registration exercise. We are planning for matriculation when uh, I ran onto somebody again, divine intervention. My life. I ran into Professor Elio Madi, who was then the dean, faculty of law. How did it happen? I was in the midst of some other boys under the tree in front of Musa. Musa, we call Mozambique Hall, is what we call Musa. And we are discussing there. I, I he was passing by and he had. What I was saying, he turned back. I said, young man, come. Which faculty are you? I told him, social science. What are you doing there? Why don't you come over to law? He actually sold the idea of really learning to my head. I said, because say, you have the language. Why don't you come over to law? That was it. And he said, I could come to his faculty for guidance. So I went there. I was given a change of course form. But there was one woman called Mrs. Solami Jula who stood between me and the faculty of law at Ife. She did everything to frustrate me and she always frustrated me. She was there in the, I think she was assistant registrar or deputy registrar, academics. She insisted on my reading what I was admitted for. So I pulled out of the university. And lawyers, don't forget where I was coming from. I mean, where I was very stubborn. <laughs> President William Madi has sold the idea into my head and it got so I could become a lawyer. I never thought of it. It was divine intervention. I went back to Ibado. When I got to Ibado, don't forget I left my parents, my home, for long. So I had vowed never to have anything to do. So I went straight to the house of Mr. Bolaji, Rutimi Bolaji. He was a copper when he came to Joss, he came to South. So we got to know each other at the youth movement of the Baptist Convention. Baptist, in our Baptist, he was a member of the youth. In fact, we actually elected him as our local president. So he had returned back to this, the West and he was working with NMPC as an accountant. So I located him. And I, I narrated my experience. He scolded me. He abused me for leaving certainty for a certainty. That's how I have stayed. I said, no. Uncle, I want to read law. So he now advised me the following day that I could not just sit down in his house. I should go back to the Polytechnic and brush up my GC papers. So that the next, the following year, I could apply to the law. So I took to his advice. So I came with some money from, from Joss. It's not sufficient at all. So I went to, then he brought an advertisement in the, the daily sketch, what is the daily sketch in this battle, which he showed to me. What was that advertisement? The UPN governors were in power then. They came on board in 1979. And we are talking of 1980 here. So they established Ogun State Polytechnic in 1980. So I became one of the pioneer students. So I went to Ogun State Polytechnic to obtain the form. The tuition was free. It was free education under the European government. So I enrolled for basic studies. It was there I met Governor Amusu. He was one of the pioneer students. He was an accountancy student. The now chairman, former chairman of AD in Nundo State. Uh, Solaiji, Solaiji, now ambassador to Spain also, was also one of us. So I enrolled, and then the following year I did my papers, and I came out at having the best results in West Africa. I had a B for both my Cambridge and 
this advanced level because we have to do two exams to do Cambridge in March. I don't know. I still repeated the same fit. A B A A B A. So so I now decided to apply for law. This time again, first choice law, second choice law. And of course I became a kind of celebrity. Everybody wanted me. But this time I really applied to IFE. I now applied to University of Ibadan. Anytime my classmates would tell anytime they are they are doing student checking, checking our career. I used to throw my own on the floor for them to pick whichever they want. <laughs> because I had the Cambridge, I had the so that was how wow. <laughs> I, became, I read law and uh, and of course in the course of that, thank God for the Nigerian press. A publication was made celebrating my achievement at the Cambridge Advantage. So a club in my hometown called Lagelu 16 Club got to read about my achievement. So they sought for me and looked for me and gave me scholarship. So I was community trained. I was not trained by any parent. And I had finished at the University of Bad waiting for my graduation. I'd be waiting to move to the law school when my mother got to know. By then, my father had passed away. I never knew. My father had died about 19 years before. And I was seeing my mom after 16 years, 8 months. She was seeing me for the first time. And it was a long story. That was why I was reintegrated back into the family. But by then, the Lagilu system took over my education. And they sent me to the law school. And again, when I got to the law school, I ran into another, I had another challenge of being able to meet up with the financial requirement because the scholarship fee was 3,000 naira. That was paid to me. And I had to pay my school fees. I had to buy books. And uh, of course, the library system club, through one of them, provided for my accommodation at Aguda. In Suru Lele. But I used to walk from Aguda, Suru Lele, to Masha every morning to catch a bus to stadium, five kobo. Then from stadium to CMS, five kobo. I used to walk religiously every morning from CMS to law school. It was not that far. And some of my colleagues will tell you what I saw. People like Folai Wiyo, Tunde Folai Wiyo, to give me a ride. Uh, Ura, Ogunke, a prominent lawyer in the barrio, used to give me a ride, you know? The day I'm unfortunate to get a ride because I used to wait for them under the bridge, that Bonnet Camp uh, bridge. Under the uh, Bonnet Camp bridge to wait for them. And sometimes if their cars are, are full, I will continue <laughs> trekking, walking down. And it's not far, just about two, three kilometers. But the day I took my children there, everyone there were crying. You wouldn't believe that. That's what I was doing, but I did this successfully. And again, when I got to the bar, we had to be caught, I had no money to buy we can go. So I had to borrow the wig and gown of Shegun Laguju, now a judge of Ayose Thai Court. He borrowed me soon. And even after I was sent to NYC camp in uh, Akure, Iju, Iju, Itagolu, that's where we were, in the Ondo State. So that's where I was sent to. When I came back, I had to be borrowed for 13 months. I had to be borrowing wig and gown. I was born in Uganda for 13 months. Thank God for the light of Chief D. Akita, not my own Akita. Uh, Chief Kiu Latunji, my Oga, Shegun Laguju. There are some sinners that will not let go, will go their wig. They, look, they can't imagine any other person putting on their wig. But there are, there are some that we are Libra. Let us. So I was buying my things. It pissed me. The first thing I bought was uh, my gown. You know, then bought locally made 200 naira, paid for by. Alaji Nurini Akombi, a prominent politician in Nibado. So that was how I started. Thank you so much, Renemsik. It's a long journey. It's a long journey. Oh, for where you are. We thank God too. Renemsik, um, quickly, I would just want to add, so far you're joining the legal profession. Has there been any case, any particular case you've handled that, you know, that got you fulfilled, that, you know, you have to thank God that despite all this journey, Thank God I came, I've come to this realization, and this particular case might be a case you did pro bono, it might be a prominent one you did. Well, you know. thank you very much for the question. Uh, I will mention three cases in particular, and all the three were done 
not because of fees. And the first one, at the risk of being modest, but to God be gratitude to Almighty God, was the impeachment case of Ladoja. He now could do in case Part 1025. Many of you will have read it. It has never happened before in the history of Nigerian jurisprudence that an impeached governor or deputy governor will be returned. And of course, God made that possible for me. I was the one, the, for the first time in Nigerian jurisprudence, in the history of Nigerian jurisprudence, it happened. I got impeachment reversed. And the judge that did that for me, first time was Justice Bolaji Yusuf, now at the Court of Appeal. Even before, it was at the appellate stage that my seniors, people like Chief, uh, Chief Oleola Nikpeku, uh, Kiri Dolu, Kola Udenyod, came and joined me. But I secured, even at the high court level. So also was the case of uh, Oshio Male. Many of you will have read that. Against Osumbo. By the way, Osumbo was one of my teachers. Mm -hmm. Osumbo. He actually taught my wife. Oh. You like. But he was the incumbent governor. And for the first time in the history of Nigerian legal history, I got him removed. We got Oshiomale installed. Again, it was on appeal at the appeal state that the likes of Shivala Nipekun came and took for him, became my the lead cancer. But God had given me victory at the I caught level and tribunal level before. Then there was one that actually tasked me. Again, pro bono. It was also a political case. So a case of uh, Akimboro, the chairmanship of Ibarakpa local government. That was a case in which we won at the tribunal and the governor refused to swear him in. It was a case I handled that I even collapsed in court. And thank God for my twin brother, Fagwe Mies, and God bless him. I came quickly and rescued him from the court and took me somewhere wow. where I was isolated for about a week. Wow. In fact, I was brought to Niger State here. Including my wife, they never knew where I was. I actually collapsed and fell unconscious in court. Well, the case of a. Uh, and we were in court 13 times. For that case, those three cases will remain evergreen in my memory, wow. and they were done handled by me, not for pecuniary interest, not for pecuniary gain. Just because of the opportunity, ah, these are good cases for me, and let's try, let's try something novel. Because when when I was handling Ladoja's case, even my reverse nurse in town, I got to comment. One of them in the in the Guardian that I was sitting my head against a stone wall. I remember Chivakidi saying that on the, in the Guardian, that's, in, in, and the impeachment is like hitting your head against it. He didn't mention my name, but he said that, that handling the impeachment case, trying to reverse it, was like hitting your head against a, a stone wall. And it was referring to the case of Balari Musa, which Chief Duke Ajayi fought to no avail. But God gave, God gave us victory. Yes. And the issue the was suppressed up to the Supreme Court. And so also was the case of uh, Oshu Male. It was suppressed. And in the two cases, the two appellate court paid special appellate attention to me, to my industry and what I had done at the, at the trial stages. The, actually, Justice Abdullahi of the Court of Appeal in in a uh, Oshimale case, actually referred to that. And Justice, uh, a blessed memory of the Supreme Court, uh, oh, oh, not to put that, uh, from Niger, Niger Data. <laughs> a very popular judge that we quote him every now and then. Uh, oh, he gave the legal judgment. In a, in a, not, not just case, they were in the judgment. 
The son is now the court of appeal. Because from Niger State, uh, Delta State. He just retired or uh, died shortly thereafter. I remember his name. He also paid special attention to me in his judgment, to what I've done, and he referred to the question I'd asked and to processes at first at first. Because it was in that case that it was decided by the Supreme Court that it's safer for any case when the preliminary objection is filed in allusion is someone. It's safer for you to also file your defense. Because you know, could you engage the lake? The attorney general who defended the state and the few members of the House of Assembly that we saw. File preliminary objection without filing his defense. So the Supreme Court said he put all his eggs in one basket. That where preliminary, is filed, preliminary, pre, 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 preliminary objection is filed, to an it's safer for you to file your defense. Because if the preliminary objection fails, you have nothing to fall back upon. Uh, it was there. That, uh, I'm trying to remember this fantastic justice of the Supreme Court. He had a legal judgment. Give me one past 1,021 days. Now, that was it. I will never forget the three cases. They actually shot me into life. So I had the case of Inakoju and Gisade Lake. Because it was, I did Inakoju and Gisade when I was just three years old at the bar. To, to, to up to four years old at the bar. And when I did it, Inakoju, because I just left my organ after three years of pupillage. I set up to set up my own chambers. The next question now is, uh, we would like to hear your view about Pope Village. We, we know, like you rightly said, why growing up when you started as a young lawyer, it was more of community of bringing. Well, like I did say, we were trained communally. Yes, sir. So I wanted By our seniors. Exactly. So uh, that brings us to this question. Uh, what do you think of Pope Village and the remuneration of young lawyers? Well, let me say straight away that uh, when we came on board as juniors, we are taking on as rupees in chambers where we are not on salaries. Yes, you can say this, you can take that to the bank. The lives of Joseph Uriwa when he left the Ministry of Justice, went to you, we are not on salaries. Because we are told that we are being trained, because like their counterparts in, in England, our principals believe that we too should be paid, because if we are doing privilege in England, you pay your Okay. Your, your seniors for, for training you. Oh, you pay the seniors, not the other way around. Not the other way around. Wow. So, it was their belief that they were training us and we should be the one paying them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just like medical doctors, if you are doing a residency, you pay fees. If you are doing your articleship in an accounting firm, you pay. But in Nigeria, our seniors were magnanimous, magnanimous enough not to ask us to be paying them. But we are not on salaries either. Okay, I was even luckier. Because where I was, though we were not being paid, you were learning from SCN of blessed memory, and from Laya Quadri, SCN. We were all trained in the same chambers, by the same principal. We were not paid salaries. But we had a standard in the chambers. If you are signed a file by the chambers to go to court, whether magistrate or high court, you are entitled to 20 naira transport fare. Then. But if a guy takes you in his car to court, you are not entitled to any anything. So I was lucky that I received masses of God because practically on a weekly basis, I will ask, on a daily basis, I will, I will assign a fire. Because then, as a pupil in chambers, I don't go on break. My colleagues, many of them, we go, including Sekula Guju, they all go on break. I don't go on break. I stay behind to look at the matters for the following day. Then I will now identify the necessary authorities. I will flag them place them on the file, and I will arrange them for 
our principal to come in the evening for afternoon session. Uh, my yoga, God bless him, he's still alive. Retired, retired judge of Ohio State High Court. He had two obsessions then, his work and his children. There's no matter in any court that you take Koga up to two o'clock, he will seek for adjournment wow. to go and pick his children in school. And when he, once he goes out to go and pick his children, he will not be back until five o'clock. And of course, he will be in chamber till 9 p.m. Sometimes we sleep in chambers if the demand of, uh, brief demand, I mean, uh, call for that sleep in chambers but he won't come back until five o'clock but i formed the habit of not going anywhere don't forget i had nobody to look up to so uh poverty was well written over me so to say so i had to know my limitations and live live within my limitations but before god comes back god my god I come to address my junior several times over this in chambers. That, that was what I was doing. In fact, in his book, when he clocked 80, it, and at, it is a third bad day, we launched his, his book in his son, which he wrote, his biography. He devoted two chapters to me alone. Wow. He devoted one chapter to all the other juniors in chambers. But from, to me alone, he devoted two chambers. And he captured really what I was doing. Even to my amazement, to my surprise. Even things I had forgotten. He captured them vividly in his book. So I will have arranged the files for the next day, flag the authorities, place them on the uh, on the files. So by the time he comes back by five o'clock, most of the time he will now have no choice than to assign one of the files to me. Because my colleagues in chamber called me a fickle. <laughs> so I've, I've even done, sometimes I do what they call a key. And it got to a stage that by the time I was one year old with him in chambers, I've started writing briefs for other seniors in town. And we have been paid 500 now, which was a lot of money. Myself, Prince Fagbemi, Uncle Akeoluji Miesen, myself, and Prince Agbemi, Uncle Akeluji Mese, myself, Tseni Okulu in that order, we are the well-known chaps in town that those seniors used to engage. We write briefs for them. They send us the records of our pay. So we are making good money through that. And it was through brief writing for other seniors in town that we bought our first car, Naya Purchase. And I remember when I, when I saved enough money, when I saved 500 Naira, and I took it to my yoga, because then you dare not buy anything of such without consultation with your principal. Your principal will stand as shorty for you at the higher purchase uh, uh, finance company. So the deposit then was 500 Naira. When I saved 500, I saved enough money, and I took it to my yoga, he looked at it. The same day, myself and late Jibola Langpeku wanted to buy. Jibola Langpeku was my senior in chambers. He too became SA before he died. But all of us, the five of us that were in my gas chambers, one became a judge, four of us became a senior advocate of Nigeria. There was no pushover among the five of us. So I had the privilege of being assigned five practically on a daily basis. So and I was making an average of 100 naira per week. Which was, I was even living with my younger brother. So through that, I was buying. So Nigeria was good then. With, with one Naira, you charter a car from Bolivia to Ring Road because taxi was 10 kobo, bus was 5 kobo. So if we had to spend one Naira, so by then we were patient. We are not living on the fast lane like the younger ones these days. For Lenesik, like you rightly said, that Nigeria was good then. No, yeah, what, what happened was that, reality. no, no, we knew our limitations. I remember the day we were shepherd to the motor, motor, uh, motor mat at the in the There were 505, 504, Benz, Benz and B2 packed. No, no, force, I remember. No, no, force, juniors pointed at anything higher than B2. 
All of us pointed at Bito. You will never see any of us. Look at just uh, 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 the Ariwala is in Supreme Court now. His first car was B2. Mine was B2. Fagwe Mika was B2. Olani uh, Baku was B2. But the other one of these days, they want to ride Ferrari. They want to ride Lexus. They want to ride Range Range Rover. It was not like that. We knew our limitations. I live in Face My Face Room in Agbogo. You people call it Face My Slap You now. That is the name you've given to it. But to us, it was a. Uh, Something was celebrating that we were even able to get a B2. We celebrated it. And even when we brought the car on Apple, we knew that if you don't pay, if you default in payment the following month, they will seize it from you. Because B2 then was 2,800 Naira cash down. That was the cost price. But on Apple, it was 4,000 Naira. 504 was 4,800 Naira. On Apple, it was 6,000 Naira. Why uh, 505 was 6,000 cash down, I purchased 9,000 naira. None of us, I remember, not one of us, including Yomi Alu SA now. All of us wrote B2s. There was not one of us that didn't go through that process. But you younger ones of these days, you don't even want to live in a flat, you want to live in a duplex. <laughs> huh? You want to start riding, you see? Look at them here. Some was it not uh, the next December will mark two years. When I bought ten cars, I brought to this and shout to all of you here. Wow. Wow. You see, some of them are too looking for some a particular space, you know. <laughs> yeah, that was it. I bought Camry, Twitter. Wow. For them, yeah. Wow. What I do? We never had such a privilege. We never had the privilege of being given houses to say this. Uh, these are flowers in my in these chambers. All my all my juniors live in my houses or rented apartment, which I rented for them. For those of all them here, ask them. She, she said, I bought houses for them, look where they are living. Oh, that's so in Ibadan, all the juniors live in my houses. I bought flat, block of flats. Apart from those of them who have built their own houses. The two of them who now hold their own, who have lived both their own houses. That was the part, that was the way we were trained. But the younger ones, you want to climb the tree from the top, and that's why you are crashing. You want, to, you, want to, you want to climb the tree from the top, that's the problem. I was never paid one couple of salaries as a junior, yet I was there for six months, and I thank God for my ogre because. He taught us one thing. My God taught me not to. The idea of not locking my office and my library. Ask them. My office is there. No key. My wardrobe is there. All the files. If you look at all those files. Files. On files. Presidents. This is my library here. We have the same set of goods as we have in Abuja, this Abuja office, as we have in Ibadan and Lagos. We buy three law reports every week. Which is this All of them are on law pavilion. They all have desktop. We never had such opportunities in our time. And I do ask them, if you are comparing what we are handling now, I tell them that look at your real income. Don't look, don't look at your gross income. Look at your real income. If you compare the cost of the accommodation you are living in, the cost of the cars, what you are doing. Can you say, oh, you are. I, I was correcting uh, the president of the bar the other day. I said, when you were talking about minimum poor salaries for the younger ones, do you consider their real income? That we have to pay for accommodation. You all know, if you have to rent a two bedroom flat here in Abuja, 1.2 million naira, 1.5. Eh? It's more than that now. It's more than that now. But she has a two bedroom flat. She also is a, is a senior, the head of chambers. Those are who don't have, they live in my quarters. Well, one of them, we most, you know, live in the boys' quarters here. We never had such opportunities. We are told we are being trained. But they are not, many of them are not willing and ready to, to, to be trained. 
You see, they don't know the difference between what it is and what ought to be. They're not the same thing. I will forever remain grateful to Chief Abe Babalola for the training I got from him. I will forever remain grateful to my principal, Majorly, for the training I got. I will forever remain grateful to the likes of Chief Akuli Jimmy, the like of uh, Akari Delu. Akari Delu was the general secretary of the bar when we came in. He was our local hero. So it was a kind of community training we had. Every principal in town was our principal. Every senior was our senior. I got to know Chief Ayamini when I was just one year old at the bar. He came to Ibadan to, to handle a matter. A lot of us, when Chief Akijide, Chief Roti Williams, when the lights are coming to town, all of us junior will flock into the court with our notepad and biro. In fact, you dare not stay in chambers. Your, your senior will draft, your principal will draft to go there and listen. And we start taking notes. It was not the days of computers or GSM. So that was the kind of training we had. And we are grateful to go for that opportunities. Because you learn more in court than you learn in chambers. In chamber, than what you, they've trained you. In fact, 90% of what we do in practice are not obtainable, obtainable at the law school. We are talking of the practical training here. If time she or uh, as soon ask me, Oga, is there any magic you are using? I say there is no magic. Sometimes we prepare something in chamber. I say we are prepare what we are going to do when we get to court the following day. But when we get to court, sometimes we just come. We just get get brain waves. We have to read some preliminary objection or fever focus orally. We have to throw in some spanners. I will get our way through, and they will not be asking. Oh God, is that, I led that. What was the name of that court we went to? This? That uh, land matter. In that, eh? In eh? In no, here. Not the one in Ovori. Here in Abuja, here. That land matter that I uh, threw on that same day I, I went to court with you. That how um, Federal Mortgage Bank woman. Okay, Ashley. Eh? Ashley, what was yes. uh, the name of that court? In okay. my court. It isn't just you can do it to yourself. Of course, you can't please everybody. But a pronouncement from a judge can make or mar you for life in this profession. So I, see, I pity some of our younger colleagues when they start doing gara gara before judges and justices. Doesn't worth it. A pronouncement from a judge or a justice can make or mar you for life in the profession. I recall that it was pronouncement from Justice Uliborodi that paved way for me. I was handling this matter before him in 1989. And he started to know my age at the bar. And I told him, he said, the way you are going, because this guy will be the starting point for you. I was handling the matter. I was still a junior in chambers. My guy, like, like I did say to you, half obsession from his profession and his children. He had asked me to go to court in Oyo for me, Bado, to stand out the case for him. Of course, when I got to court and I told the judge, my instruction was to stand, he just said, I was not talking to him, that I must go on. Of course, I was prepared. I prepared for the matter. And I started when they called the case. It, I was in the court, I was court examining when my principal came in. And my principal now announces presence and he wanted to take over from me and just what he said and I will never forget he said Mr. Rasi if I were you I will leave this boy alone wow. Wow. and just remember he became my father wow. until he breathed his life even after retirement I was like his first son because of that pronouncement so cancer must be careful the way they conduct themselves before judges and justices a pronouncement from a judge or a justice of this court, of appellate court can make or mar you. According to what you are living your client. Mm -hmm. Talk before a judge, you only end up punishing your client. Don't forget, judges who are human beings. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. 
our, our conduct in and out of the court room must be exemplary. We must respect judges and magistrates. So Ruth Williams, in his glorious days, when he was alive, was leading us in a matter in Lagos at the Supreme Court. We were leading, I was too junior, to even call myself a junior, because my principal too was a junior in that matter. My principal farmed out the case to him, in that matter to lead us. Among the juniors were my principal, Justice Atilade Ojo, which was still in practice. And we, their juniors, we followed them. And Lufa Deju, then was a CM2, grade two, Chief Master Grade, he was not yet a judge. She was passing by at the whole premises of the uh, uh, Supreme Court. The Master Court was located there. And Roti Willen stopped all of us to, to wait for Lufa Deju to pass. We had to wait, all of us to sit until Luvaju was passing. She was then a chief magistrate grade two, not even a chief magistrate grade one. And when she came and she saw Sir William, she was shocked and knelt down. And Sir William said, don't do that for me again in public. When we are in private, we can do that. That was Williams oh. in his glorious day, respecting the chief magistrate court, a chief magistrate. And what is obtainable now, today? Some of these boys and girls, they will be waiting. They will sit down there. You see Supreme Court Justice coming. They will not even get up. I was at a function here in Abuja, Ladikwali, uh, where Justice of the Supreme Court came in. And some of these are younger ones. We are sitting down. It is unimaginable that that will happen. It is not that man or that woman and that dress of a Joseph Zucot that way. It is the profession. Eh? People must imbibe this. Those who are the ethics we imbibe then, that we still keep to ourselves. Eh? I, now, there's no way I come across a justice of anywhere, even inside the aircraft. If I'm seated in the first class, and the justice comes of the Supreme Court, unless I don't know him or her, I will get up for him or her to come and say, I go back to the economy. I still maintain that till today. That, is, that was the way we were trained. Of course, in those days, we don't see judges outside the way you are seeing them now. They were very rare commodities to be seen outside. I remember nowadays, we younger ones, we didn't, when Jessica Deshaw was passing by, Kyle was the last CG of your state. He was elevated to the Supreme Court. Or Fakayode, just Fakayode. Eh? We did not wait in the corridor. Only our seniors, most seniors that will wait, the rest of our younger will run for cover. Judges were like masquerades. Respect them. Do they command that respect? Have that aura around them. You can't quantify it in naira and kobo. But these younger ones, because they now have freak dollars in their pocket, <laughs> they think they've seen it all, and they don't know they they are destroying the profession. Thank you so much, Daniel. I know you are very busy, and we like thank you for. Honestly, sometimes some of this when we see what is going on, I am for privilege. If I have my way. No one will go out there to practice without serving five years per village. I serve three years. But because things have so degenerated now, I even call for five years per village. But as long as they leave the law school, they just go and open a shop. I put clinic, I just said something. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work. You can't compare experience. You can't buy it. You can't buy it. Experience is the best teacher. So I would advise. Thank you go you younger much. ones to go for pupillage. Thank you so much. Daniel. Go and learn. You. you will gain it. Finally, when before you before you confess, I will just I uh, just you, like the that, 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 that pupillage because it's very germane to it. Yes, I want you to take it with the conclusion. Okay. The next question, which is the concluding part, is your advice for young lawyers. So you might just want to yes. take it from my uh, my see my advice for young lawyers is to go out there and learn. 
from their seniors. Not from their principal alone, but from the seniors in their area of jurisdiction mm -hmm. and across. Anytime you hear that if, if a foremost lawyer is coming to town, create time to go to that court to listen to, to that famous lawyer. Because you might not have that opportunity for another two, three years. Some cases just, just don't come up every now and then. Because she was referring a little while ago, she was referring to a matter in a way. Yes, three weeks ago at the Court of Appeal. Those of them that were that claimed that they learned a lot. Every, many of them were taking selfie with me after you finished. We had their appeal, I did and we got job right there. It's not every day you have such opportunities. You just see a technical point, you can exploit as an erudite and well system lawyer to the advantage of your own client. It's not every day you come across such. I got seen a whole election petition thrown out because of no payment to Andre Naira before in this country. Andre Naira. And we were wondering, how did it, how come? How did it happen? It's about experience. So I advise the younger one to go out there. Even if you have the money, even if your parents have all the money in the world, to establish chambers, to buy you cars, and still go out there to learn. Peace. Finally on that, I remember when I finished and I was to start working, I got a job with a free organization with a car. Santana was the reigning car then. And he flat in Suru Lili. And my salary was going to be 400 Naira. And that was at the time when judges were earning 300 Naira. Salaries. When professors were earning 250. My salary was going to be 400 Naira. Naturally, I was excited. I took the letter of appointment and I brought it to him, but I was either wishing to myself, dreaming how I'll be riding cars and the oppressing uh, coming to town from Lagos. And my uncle, my daughter, one of those that sponsored me to school, to university and law school, called me. And he said, he sat me down. That day when I came in, I left the, the letter of appointment on this dining table. Because he had this practice of going straight to the dining on return from work. As soon as he came back that day, went straight to the dining, he saw the letter, went through it, and the job he started, he continued with his meal. And I was wondering, what's wrong with this old man? <laughs> After finishing his meal, he turned to me, he said, young man, how old are you now? He said, if I were you, I will, I will sacrifice my today for my tomorrow. I will never forget that phrase. He had told the story to my juniors before, what he said to me. He said, if I were you, I would sacrifice my today for my future. He would have sacrificed my present for my future. He said, let me take you to where they will teach you the ABC of law. As again, what you learned at the law school. Don't take up this appointment. It looks lucrative and attractive to you. But the beginning is bound to be rough for you. But you will enjoy the end. Say, but the decision was, is yours. And he just got up. Of course, because, because I had nobody to run to. Was my daughter's father. Was everything to me. I, did, I didn't even have a wig and gown. So I acceded to reluctantly. Not that I love to do so. But I acceded to it. But what I lost in those three years as a junior, I gained in one day. After I started practicing on my own. Again, in one day, everything gained by my contemporaries who went to pay, pay the employment, I gained in one day. By the time I was five years old at the bar, as a junior, I was already living in my own house. And most of us, still with my guy, and we are not, I'm not doing the integration. Land matters. Mainly, land, and, land matters and uh, chief testing matters. Well, what we are doing, not even commercial. What time will you give us land? We said, views on them, no. And that's it. And at least, four of my juniors now in Ibadan, because they won the land matter. 
the one they gave to us as, as uh, professional fees. I gave them a, a plot each wow. from it. Wow. So you cannot compare that to somebody who just went straight for. Uh, sorry, sorry, if you are 40,000 or 50,000 in the chambers, you cannot compare yourself who works in the corporate organization with 150,000. But if you learn and you are well trained, I said, that's 50,000 naira. One day, you will be making 10 million naira. Why you will still be on this 150,000? That's the, the difference. So what Chief Ogunemi said to me, that if I were you, I, I will sacrifice my today for my tomorrow, made serious sense mm. later to me in life. You get it? So it's safe to conclude now that we young lawyers should at least sacrifice. You must, you must learn to sacrifice your today for your tomorrow. Thank you so much, NFC. Uh, for having me. So, to my viewers, uh, this is the Red uh, Senior Locator of Nigeria, uh, Chief uh, Denny Michael Akutola, you know, one of our most revered, you know, SNN. Thank you so much uh, for coming to You are welcome. Really it's nice having you.